Hello my 3D printing friends. This is another Ender 3 V2 upgrade video where I'm installing this uh, BL Touch Auto Bed Leveling Sensor by Creality and this package is sent to me by Banggood for a review. Usually these upgrade videos I start with explaining the reason for the upgrade but uh, I think it's quite obvious here uh, if probably you are familiar with the manual bed leveling on Ender 3 and uh, well this package it says auto bed leveling so uh, it will do this for us automatically it has included some small robotic arm which will rotate these uh, knobs and uh, no just kidding so the expression is not really correct it will not uh, level the bed automatically for us we have to do it ourselves but uh, it will compensate any offset uh, and not only in the center but also in the corners and that offset will be mesh offset will be included in the coordinate given by the g code Allow me a few words about the theory. Every CD printer has to know where is its zero position, uh, zero position of the nozzle, because from that uh, point it calculates the coordinates and uh, do the printing. Now on stock and the three is solved by these limit switches. It goes the X and Y first, and then the most important for us it is the Z uh, limit switch. And with this, we, uh, when it moves down and it press the Z limit switch know exactly the position of the x-axis gentry, the, the, this alloy solution. And then it's up to us with the manual bed leveling by rotating these knobs to make the printing surface approximately 0.1 millimeter from the nozzle and in all every point. So this means with the bed leveling actually we, we make the surface of the printing parallel with the moving path of the nozzle. Now imagine that we move this limit switch here upside down and of course, uh, during the printing, yes, it has to be higher than the nozzle, otherwise it will hit the printed object. But uh, when the leveling the bed, it has to be lower, because otherwise the nozzle would hit the bed surface too. So this is what BL Touch does. It's, it's just a switch which goes up, jumps out and uh, the contact surface, and when it touches the bed, it, it goes down, back. And now the reference point will be the printing surface. And that's great because now uh, it's independent of the thickness of the plates. We can re remove this printing surface with a different thickness and it will always know where the top of that surface is. Well, for example, my uh, Prusa Mark III used the Pinder probe, uh, which is based on ma magnetic uh, field and it needs a metallic printing surface. So, uh, and even if I want to replace different uh, surfaces uh, I have to change the offset. Not a big problem because I can set it in a press it in a, a slicer uh, but here uh, it's independent from that. Since it's, we are here on the printing surface it can do it in, in several points not only in center but uh, even in the corners and that it, it will create some kind of mesh offset and it will compensate uh, that, that uh, number in the during the printing so it's always printed perfectly but that may be the problem imagine that your printing surface is under the angle of course not not this big angle but uh, it will be easier to explain and uh, it will be compensated by by this uh, mesh offset but during the printing well your printed objects will not be square perfectly that will not be not exactly 90 degree angle that's why it is extremely important to, uh, before you start uh, with the BL Touch install, one more time level the bed as much as uh, precise as possible and only then start uh, with the BL Touch upgrade. Okay, now let's see what's in the box. Small box. A spare contacting pin. And this is the beer touch itself. Cable, zip ties, uh, and the mounting bracket. So this is for especially for the V2, Ender 3 V2. That's it. Before we start, well, I noticed a few things are not really in this instruction manual and also you can see the screenshot is not really for Industry V2. Uh, but never mind, let's go step by step. But before you start with any modification, do one more time the bed leveling. Spend, I don't know, double the time, but try to make it accurate as much as possible. 
because uh, I will even uh, lock the final position of the knobs with, with the regular M4 nut. Especially it is important if you have those uh, factory springs and they are a little bit too weak so the knob may unroll by time and you will not even notice it because the beer touch will compensate this unleveled surface. Uh, but the result will be that uh, your printed object will not be squared perfectly if you print some bigger technical parts for example. The bed is leveled, I will move the z-axis up a little bit. And now I will lock the position of the knobs with this M4 nut. It's called counter nut because uh, it will just hold it in a position. Seven millimeter wrench. And I'm holding the knob in a position and tight with the tighten the other nut. It doesn't have to be super tight. Now don't forget with this I cannot uh, now rotate freely these knobs. If if you for any reason you want to re-level your bed, you first have to unloose that uh, M4 nut and only then you, uh, you can adjust the bed level with these knobs. It looks like the theory and practice is a little bit different, so locking the knob with the counter nut is not so easy because when I tie this uh, small counter nut on the other side, it moves a little bit, so uh, it's not uh, perfect. And the reason for this is the backlash of the thread. When I tie the M4 nut, it pulls the screw down to the other side of the thread on the knob, and this moves the bed a little bit down. If it is equal on all four screws, it is ok for BL touch because it only needs the parallel surface and its position can be equally lower or upper. But I can check this with the regular paper method, so I will remove those M4 nuts and just rely on the friction resulted by those stronger springs. I left this footage in the video so you can see I gave it a try as a several comments suggested, but uh, it didn't work for me. <sighs> Now after 15 minutes I give up and I will just rely on these yellow springs and uh, I will remove this uh, contour nuts now. But uh, definitely you should pay attention to this if you have those uh, stock uh, springs on the Ender 3. And uh, now I can upgrade the firmware. From creality.com website go to support, downloads search for Ender 3 v2 and download the firmware for your motherboard mine is 4.2.2 and to find out this you have to open the bottom of the printer open the zip file search for beer touch non-adapter board firmware because this one this version i am using and copy the dot bin file to empty sd card in case you want to flash the firmware more than one time don't forget to rename the file, uh, it cannot be equal as previously used one. And don't forget to take out the card after you finish the flashing. So this is my SD card for CD printing, but uh, I use another one, a small one, I have to format with, with the FAT32. Uh, and uh, on this only that uh, bin file, the firmware is uh, located. Now I'll turn on the printer and the firmware should be upgraded. <laughs> Let's switch the language back. Don't forget to remove the SD card after firmware update. I will just move the z-axis to higher position where it will be more comfortable for the work. I hope holes are visible on camera, so this uh, bracket is especially for V2 and it has to go in this position. So we have here this curved surface and it has to go around this uh, head of the bolt because theoretically you could up uh, mount it in this position too, but this is the correct position. 
and here goes the BL touch. So the cables and wiring will be on the other side. M3 by 6 and by 8. So the shorter bolts I will use to mount the BL touch to the bracket. I will start the other side and only then I will tie the bolt, but not too much, don't forget this is plastic. I think it's easier to mount the cable now. And now the BL touch should be higher than the nozzle. And with, when it takes the touch, it will go down this uh, contact surface and it has to be lower than the nozzle. Let's remove the Z-axis limit switch, we don't need it anymore. And let's remove the cable too, we will take it out from the other side. And now the wiring, so I need this uh, cable from BL touch to, to connect to the motherboard and also I want to remove the Z uh, limit switch cable. Before I, I turn to the printer to the side I want to lose these two bolts. on camera so I can see is it these are cables for the stepper motors we don't touch them but uh, I can see here a, a Z so this is the cable for the limit switch for Z axis I will take it out and the BL touch has to go here this side of the cable is glued but never mind I will just uh, left the whole cable inside this space so so this gap I pull this cable and since I cannot pull the other side I will just leave it here and now let's plug the beer touch just go around following these cables and it has to go there be careful there are some versions where the 3 plus 2 pins are separated and if you put those two pins uh, in wrong direction, then you may destroy the motherboard. Let's follow this cable, but I, I didn't uh, go to the cable connector because it's nice zip tied. Uh, but I found this alloy extrusion here is quite sharp, so I will put some insulation tape around it. Quick check if the fan is rotating freely. Okay. I will just use these zip ties to connect it, to lock it together with these uh, other cables here. Much elegant solution would be if I would insert it in, in this uh, cable arranger, but mm, this will do it so far. Now I can turn on the printer and see if the wiring is okay. It was some self-test here. So now I have to choose the prepare and auto home. But before I do that, uh, I will hold my finger on the switch on the power button and I want to check here if it stops. I want to be sure that wiring is okay. It starts with the X, Y axis, goes to the center and goes down and I will stop it earlier, just to be sure it works. Okay. I will repeat now the auto home, but I, I will leave it now to touch the printing surface. Auto home. it works I like it moved up a little bit now but if I zero the 
z-axis there is approximately two or three millimeters gap here now I have to tell to the printer the distance between the touching surface and the end of this nozzle but the beer touch touch the surface here but my nozzle is over here so first I want to move the nozzle on this position and then to search what is that uh, offset when will it touch the printing surface let's say 40 millimeters and now the nozzle is on that proposition where the beer touch was before <laughs> sorry about bad angle of the camera I didn't notice it so to summary the operations first you have to go to the auto home and after homing it moves the Z up approximately 10 millimeters so we have to go to the move Z and go to the zero value and next step is to moving the Z offset slowly to the negative value until we got that friction between the paper and the nozzle as usually we do with the manual bed leveling and then we have to store this value and it will be saved on the SD card so make sure that your printing SD card is inside the printer and now I can see the same friction as I usually do when I do manual bed leveling so in my case the Z offset is minus 1.81 millimeters fortunately one interesting thing I noticed uh, and that's the that he didn't remember the Z offset probably it's uh, recorded on the SD card as you can see now Z offset is zero and now I will insert the SD card And here now you can see the preset uh, Z offset. So pay attention if you have several cards or you, you use the same card for the several printers. I have some files here on the SD card, but I, I cannot use them because uh, that G code is not usable now with the BI touch. I have to add some two lines of, of code uh, to the beginning, but let's do that in a slicer. In Cura, go to settings, printer, and uh, manage printers. Go to the machine settings. And then in the start G code window, add G29. Search for G28 and below it add the G29 code. And I will slice this bed leveling object for testing. It can be printed in 10 minutes, so it's very good for test prints. If you are using a Prusa slicer, you go to the printer settings, custom G code, and find the start G code g28 and below it add the g29 so i'm using the same sd card where the z offset is recorded i will speed up the video but leveling took approximately well almost 1.5 minutes and since you should watch the first layer anyway here is another thing to pay attention check if the pin is pulled back into beer touch I was very busy with the stopwatch and I didn't notice and for the first time this happened. And it's good that I have a replacement pin but uh, I bend it back this one and it works again. You can still tune and do the fine tune with the Z offset but I will not change now anything. As you saw, when I enter into tune, this Z offset was already there. So probably it should be zero, uh, because when I press the knob without changing the number, this value was added to the preset Z offset, and uh, then also scratched the bed. Ouch. So pay attention to this. <laughs> and uh, any advice how to clean this PLA from the bed surface? The start was hard, but anyway, my second attempt went without any problems. Beer touch works smoothly, Z offset started correctly. And I was even playing with the Z offset light settings, but this time I change it to zero as a start value. And finally that first layer looks perfect in every corner. I'm very happy with the results though. At the end I like to take the squares off one by one to feel is the adhesion equal. 
And that will be it. If you are happy with the stock firmware by a Creality and you don't need other options, then you are done. As you saw, I had some hard time, but uh, if you pay attention to those things I mentioned in the video, then uh, you will not have the problems. Okay, so for only uh, pay attention that from time to time you have to check the Z offset. For example, if you are replace the nozzle, you replace or move the BL touch or you change the, the test pin or maybe after, I don't know, half years uh, to check if the nozzle varying is significant. So in that case, yes, you have to check that uh, Z offset. But you don't have to change it if you change, for example, the printing surface because it always measures the position from the top of any surface which is placed here. Uh, now, uh, maybe you are familiar that uh, I already did an upgrade that uh, placed the Micro Swiss hot end inside and I changed there the maximum temperature to 270. Only 10 degrees more because I still have the stock uh, thermistor and heating cartridge. So I got some information that it can go up to 280, but for the safety reason, I just raised the temperature to 70 and I can print some ASA, for example, which requires this temperature. Now, uh, I placed now the factory firmware back and uh, now again, of course, I have that limit to 260 degrees Celsius. So I again modified the Marlin firmware. Uh, to get the high temperature and plus the BL touch. I'm not going to details uh, how to do it. Uh, I did it uh, in a pre previous video. I placed uh, a link with the timestamp so you can see exactly uh, how to install the Microsoft Visual Code Studio, how to add those two extensions which are required and you have to download the configuration files for Ender 3v2 and that file has to be modified. So uh, from here uh, I will show you my list of changes or lines uh, which are uh, replaced. Uh, I tried to follow the Teaching Tech uh, tutorial for BL Touch, but that BL Touch used the uh, Z level uh, pins on the motherboard, and our uh, has uh, five connectors which completely goes into the separate dedicated uh, connection uh, place uh, for the BL touch. So it's a little bit different uh, and I got very nice help from Facebook uh, for this. And okay, let's see that uh, custom firmware. First I disable this line because now we don't use this uh, end stop pin. And I have to change the end stop inverting to true, the logic of the probe. And I want to enable the, that you use probe for Z, Z homing. And I am enabling the Z safe homing line and also d define the BL touch. And here I am setting the offset uh, of, to the nozzle. I will explain this in a minute. Enabling the line out of bed leveling bilinear. And well, I will not change these lines. Grid max points is 3. And in advanced configuration file, I have to enable the baby step Z probe offset. And now I can compile the file. A little bit more than a minute it is, it is finished. And then I can copy this bin file to the SD card to flash the firmware. Let's find the exact offset for X and Y axis. So I have here a very small spot. I will start the auto home. Now I place the paper exactly below the probe. Okay. Now I move the nozzle exactly above this point. 155 and 130. Well, I hope it's visible now in X and Y direction, it's on the spot. And now the coordinates are 110 and 125. And finally I can update the firmware and I hope it will work correctly finally because actually this is my third attempt. Okay, it's flashed now. Let's replace the card to the printing one. And let's see if the BL touch now works. Okay, 
First, let's check if the if I can set the 270 the temperature. Okay, so that part works, but I will not change it yet. And now, out of home. Okay, it looks like it will work. Again, out of home. Well, here I tried the same procedure as with the factory firmware, so I moved the Z to the zero and I tried to change the Z offset manually, but unfortunately it didn't result any movement of the nozzle. So I couldn't find the Z offset by touching that uh, piece of paper. Never mind, I'll try to do it during the printing. Well, actually setting the Z during 3D printing is not new thing, this is the officially advised calibration method on Prusa 3D printer. Uh, this means I am starting the printing line and moving the Z down until I get the nice line. Okay, let's try this. Uh, this is the leveling process. And after this I will try to adjust the Z offset during the printing line. The nozzle starts 3D printing from almost 2 mm height, but only a few seconds I am very near to the ideal Z offset. Hope it's easy, but I try to lower in the Z. Almost done, and it looks good so far. So it looks great. Uh, all nine squares are, are quite equal, the lines and the density between lines. Uh, all I have to figure now is uh, how can I store the Z offset. Mm. I hope it will do it. We we'll see next time when I turn on the printer. And it's there. Probably it's recorded on an SD card. Okay, so this method can work. And the uh, final words about the BL Touch uh, Auto Leveling Sensor by Creality. I really recommend this package because here are those uh, five pins which goes from the BL Touch to the main board are are uh, in, on, in one piece so you have to you can put them together because uh, I read on Facebook that uh, there is another version where the those uh, two pins and three pins are separated and if you don't uh, connect them correctly you can fire the motherboard so so this this uh, solution is much safer and also uh, uh, i hope you don't need more than 260 degrees celsius i really recommend to use the creality's firmware which you can download directly for BL touch unfortunately uh, i need a high temperature so i uh, and we don't have that kind of source code for that firmware. Uh, that's why I have to upgrade this one. Uh, I'm sure I will experiment uh, more about it. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure when will I post the update, maybe in YouTube post or somewhere, or, or maybe on my website. So here uh, you can follow on this link, any updates if I change in the firmware, if you want to update uh, yours, for example. Well, I will place an affiliate link uh, to the Banggood website to, to this uh, package uh, and uh, affiliate means uh, it doesn't cost you more, uh, only I will get some small commission from the purchase. And well, uh, I hope this was uh, useful to you. Uh, if you have any suggestions, so uh, I really need some help and I, I'm open for new ideas uh, how to improve, especially about the firmware. Uh, thank you for watching and um, happy printing.
<laughs> so satisfying. <laughs>